Joining us now is Pam Sasser, Breast Health Nurse Navigator for St. Peter's Health. Thanks for being on our show, Pam. Thank you, it's good to be here. Yes, excellent. So can you talk to us about what you do for patients as a breast health navigator and maybe even share a patient story with us? Sure, so um, people always ask the question, what do you do as a navigator? And it's really kind of hard to define exactly what that role is, but um, I typically get involved with a patient um, when they're recommended for a breast biopsy. So I visit with them and explain what, what's gonna happen, kind of walk them through that process. And then uh, the majority of the biopsies come back negative, mm -hmm. but if it does come back positive for a breast cancer, then I help navigate them through that entire continuum of care. Um, I help alleviate any barriers. I act as um, kind of that conduit. Mm -hmm. So, because once a breast cancer diagnosis is made, things go pretty quickly, and there's a lot of different um, teams that are involved, the surgeon, the medical oncologist, radiation oncologist, sometimes genetic counseling. So I just kind of help to be that main focus and kind of be that support, provide educational and emotional support for that, so. Excellent, so um, how about, do you actually also provide support um, on prevention and educating people on prevention of breast cancer? Yeah, so I love that piece. I love to get out and educate the public. A lot of the things we'll do at, through St. Peter's is we'll do activities um, to where we're doing education and promotion on prevention, not just breast specific, but other types of mm -hmm. cancers. So you may have seen our presence at the Carroll College basketball games, volleyball games, we've been present there. Dr. Aben Troth will go and always talk and you know um, encourage women to get their mammograms. Mm -hmm. um, always, you know, starting age 40, get out and do your yearly mammograms. But yeah, so anytime we have an opportunity, we've also gone and talked to the um, different high school activities um, like volleyball again and just talk about the promotion of basically at that age is more like you know just healthy mm -hmm. um, behaviors. Excellent. Can you talk to us a little bit about what folks can do to prevent breast cancer? So the big thing um, you know with most chronic diseases you want to have you know a good diet so anything, especially for breast, they have found that um, things that are high in cruciferous, uh, like your um, cruciferous vegetables, so broccoli, cauliflower, um, anything like that can be helpful. And then also ha high antioxidants, so your berries, you know, so I always encourage people to just kind of eat the rainbow, mm -hmm. you know, so you want to have lots of fruits and vegetables, you want to limit um, your red meat, your caffeines, um, definitely alcohol and tobacco. Um, a lot of cancers have proven that alcohol can cause and breast is one of them, so. So are there some common myths about breast cancer that you can shine some light on? Sure, yeah, there's actually quite a few and it's kind of surprising when I do get out and start talking to the public and people's differing opinions. Um, one of the biggest one is probably family history. I hear all the time like, oh, I don't need to worry about breast cancer, it's not in my family. Um, and the biggest risk factor is being female mm -hmm. and having breasts. So the genetic component, yes, that exists, but it's a much smaller ratio than people think. Um, another thing is young women don't get breast cancer, and that's not true. I've navigated a good population, you know, that are under 40. Um, another misconception could be that men don't get breast cancer when in fact they do. So, you know, those myths that are out there or, you know, if you aren't experiencing pain, then it's not a breast cancer, mm -hmm. you know. So trying to help to d dispel those myths. And you know, I always encourage anybody, if you have any kind of a question whatsoever or a concern, go in and see your primary care provider and make sure that they follow that up appropriately. Is there a piece of advice that you would give someone, uh, their, you know, a primary first piece of advice if they were newly diagnosed with breast cancer? So the biggest takeaway on a brand new diagnosis is to be careful who you talk to because everybody wants to share a story mm -hmm. and none of the stories are the same. There's probably about 15 different types of breast cancers that are out there. 
and not everyone is the same. So, you know, your story is going to be different than her story versus, you know, somebody else's. So be very um, cautious on who you're talking to. And then also, too, I just tell people to just take it one day at a time. It's very stressful. And, um, you know, I also encourage people that the majority of our breast cancers were catching much earlier. So our cure rates are, you know, in a very high percentage. So when you're hearing the media and all these scary stories, know that that's probably not their story. So try to keep positive and encouraged. Good advice. So we have time maybe for one last question before the break. And would you have some advice for friends and family who are interested in supporting, you know, those with breast cancer? What can they do best to do that? So the big thing there for family or um, loved ones um, is to just listen to the patient, kind of watch their cues. Sometimes, you know, their family member might act like they're doing great, but maybe, you know, like things that they enjoy typically doing, they're not doing anymore. So kind of pick up on those cues and let them tell you what they need. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you just assume they need this where in fact, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I, I don't need that today. Maybe mm -hmm. today I just need to sit and read a book and be quiet, mm -hmm. you know, or other times it's maybe volunteering to take them to their appointments, you know, or let's go see a movie. Sometimes, you know, it's just helping just let them know that you're there and available. And sometimes it's hard for people to have that, you know, face-to-face -face conversation. We have our cell phones now, so maybe it's, you know, sending a quick text thinking about you, or can I bring your family something? What does everybody like? You know, is there a certain food that you're not interested in having? You know, and let, me, let me help. Great, we'll pause for a quick break. In a few minutes, we'll be back to learn more about PAM and different types of breast cancer treatments after these messages don't go away. <music> 